would you ask your future husband if he could? Can, can you cook? <laughs> 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 so what's the longest you've waited? A year. A year? A year. Like, as in, were you dating a guy for a year? Yeah, but like we never used to see each other all the time, stuff like that, but yeah, yeah. As in, you were actually like, from the first date, <laughs> What's your I mean? opinion on, on mixing business and pleasure? <laughs> <laughs> Yo guys, welcome back to another episode on my channel. I'm sitting in this spot, which means, which means I've got a great conversation lined up for you today. You know, on this channel, we love to talk about all things dating and relationships and seeing what we can do to attract the kind of person we want. So without further ado, please welcome Nia to the show. Hey, lovely to meet you. Thanks for having me. How are you doing today? You all right? Yeah, I'm good. I'm great. Thank yeah. you. Yourself? She made it. She made it. I made it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just about, but yeah, I've got here. So really yeah, good. I'm happy to be here. Nah, all good. All good. I know you said you wanted to talk about some things. So let's jump right in. Yeah. So tell us your age or your age range. And one thing a guy should know about you if he wants to take you on a date. Um, I My age range in terms of dating. Like, as in, like, how old you are? Like, oh, I'm, I'm 32. Okay. Or don't really normally tell people that. 20, uh. 25 at heart. Like, so I try and, like, yeah, I'm trying to, like, hold on to that for as long as I can. Why not? What's, yeah. There's nothing wrong with growing, getting older. I just don't feel like I've earned it. You've you know? earned it. I just don't feel like I've earned being 20, 32 yet. That's funny. So I feel like I want to kind of hold on to that. Okay. And then grow when, with it when I feel like okay. I've earned them so 32 years. in mind, but 25 in heart. Yes, <laughs> okay. I'm here for it. Okay. Um, one and, thing a guy should know about you. Um, Oh gosh, one thing a guy should know. If he's going to take you on a date. Um, I don't, there's so much. I don't know. Give us the most outlandish, craziest thing. <laughs> that one, wherever it is. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I've got extreme ADHD. Okay. So I'm probably going to be late. So I'd probably okay. let them know. <laughs> let them know. Like, That's... tell me if if the dinner booking's at seven, tell me it's at five. Yes, <laughs> a million percent. And I still might be there at quarter past, but better late than ugly. That's what my mum always said. <laughs> better late than ugly. I, I take that. I'll take that. Interesting. And like, what what kind of guy do you look for? Um, I like I look for guys that are ambitious. Okay. Um, I like ambition. I don't like you know. I think. As a, you've got one life, and I think that you should strive, always strive, no matter where you're where you're at. Mm -hmm. Always strive for more, better in every way, in terms of the way you look, the way you feel, what you want, <laughs> who you want to be, how you want to be, um, well mannered, well moraled. Um, very important for me. Yeah, I hear that. I don't. Obviously, I'm not going to disagree with being ambitious. However, usually on people's deathbeds, their regret isn't. I wasn't ambitious enough. It's yeah. I didn't spend enough time with my family. Yeah. I didn't spend enough time with my kids. I didn't spend enough time with my friends. So the whole thing was saying like, we've got one life. Don't get me wrong. I'm definitely down for being ambitious. You know? Yeah. Um, but is it okay to be ambitious at the price of everything else? Uh, I don't know. No, I don't know. I've never really thought about that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Probably not. Mm. But then at the same time, I think because I've got ADHD, I can't do consistent the same. Okay. I do you get bored really easily? I get bored really easily. And if it's not feeding me, giving me that dopamine constantly, I'm gone. Can you not appreciate a relationship that doesn't give you constant dopamine though? Can you not still see it and recognize it and be like, oh, even though I'm not getting that dopamine hit right now, it's still like a healthy and great relationship for me? Honestly, probably not. Really? Yeah, I've tried and I can try, but that is, the whole time I will be thinking, I know I'm on a ticking clock here. So when you like, say ticking clock, tapping out. as in like you'll end things? Yeah, I know I'm tapping out. What's, yeah. what's been your longest relationship? Uh, a year and a half. Okay, that's significant though. That's not like, yeah. it's not like six months. So you- I suppose so. Was it dopamine filling the entire 18 months? No, I know. So for the, so if I go for about to about a year and a half for at least six to eight months of that, I'm breaking off. Oh, really? Things fade out for me quite quick. And I, it's a pressure on the other person. So that's why if they're not adventurous, ambitious, stuff like that, and that's not constant, yeah. then they end up feeling insecure because they then feel like they can't fulfill me. I kind of make it clear without being rude that they're not and that we need to kind of, you know, I need that. Um, and then they end up feeling quite insecure um, and that they're losing me. Uh, yeah. And then it's just, it probably ends up becoming quite 
toxic and deteriorating. So sadly. W- what what does what does relationship stability look like to you? Um, it looks like uh, growing, like memories, making memories together. Mm-hmm building a future together, mm. understanding each other, communication, um, things like that, mm. um, respecting each other's boundaries, goals, mm. and having that individual, like having, maintaining your individual self as well. Sure. I think that is very, very vital. Um, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I hear that. I hear that. What's well, something you want to bring to conversation today? You said that you had a couple um, of things you wanted to chat about. Let me think. Okay, so, so you've come from, toxic a toxic relationship Mm -hmm. and you then go into a new one and it's healthy everything's great they're complete opposite to say the person you maybe have been before in terms of traits that create the toxicity in the relationship Mm -hmm. if you then realize that you may have picked up some toxic traits through that relationship Mm -hmm. how do you then not carry them into the new one and destroy and essentially self-sabotage something that could be so great 100 percent. that's a great question uh well First step is awareness. So if you're aware of it, that's really good. Yeah. And then you need to, you have to be aware of where does it show up in your current relationship? So like, for example, if you know that there's a level of insecurity you have when your partner goes out without you, right? Yeah. When he goes, okay, babe, like I'm going out with some friends and stuff. And you kind of, if you feel something come up, you start, triggering off like why aren't you taking me like you're rejecting me etc being aware of in the moment where how does it show up in the relationship and then the more you're aware of it of when it comes up in the moment the more you'll be able to regulate that and if you feel the awareness you can feel it happening in the moment you see it happening in the moment but you you're not changing how like you're struggling to change how you're handling it when those moments happen yeah that's usually a sign that there's some healing to be done right? because it means that you're not in a place where you control it. It controls you yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. hundred percent. Um, and so it's like, okay, well, how do you heal? Well, it could be, yeah. I don't know if it's a relationship with a parent, you might have to talk to them. You know, therapy is obviously, you know, very common nowadays. Um, and then a lot of the time it's just shifting your mindset. Often yeah. a lot of the time, how we can't change how we feel, but we can change, how we see things, which then impacts how we feel. Yeah, definitely. So like, for example, right? Like, are you a jealous person? Do you get jealous at all? Um, I don't I don't think I get that jealous, okay, but I think I'm good. quite protective mm, yeah. in a way. Co- no, quite normal. territorial. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Think, I think a bit of that is healthy too. Yeah. Fair. But I think, so there are some people who get really jealous, right? And I, <laughs> my girlfriend probably hates me, but I <laughs> do not get jealous. I just don't, I just don't get jealous. And I think that comes from yourself as well. Like if you're secure within yourself. Yeah. To part, a certain extent. Partly, then yeah, hundred percent. Maybe... But, um, but I think it's like, and part of the reason when I talk to people, if they're like, oh, I feel really jealous. I don't know how to handle that. Just changing how you see it will affect how you feel. So the main reason why I don't really get jealous, let's say I'm out and about and, you know, my girlfriend goes to the bar and some guy starts hitting on her and, you know, they're just having a conversation, right? And the reason I wouldn't get jealous is because, you know, one, I know what we have. So yeah. some random guy on some random night isn't going to be a threat to yeah, that. Yeah, I love that. Or two, if some random guy on a random night is a threat to that, then the sooner I know that, the better, because then <laughs> you're not the person for me. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So in that sense, it's kind of like, you know what the two outcomes are. And as long as you know how to handle whatever outcome it is, yeah. you can let go of the the emotional stress of that. It's like when people worry about, oh, I'm worried that they're going to cheat on me. And it's like, you actually can't control whether they're going to cheat on you or not. Yeah, yeah. All you can control is, okay, how am I going to handle it if If this situation happens? Yeah. And as long as you know for yourself how you're going to handle that, you just let that go. Yeah. And that's part of how you can, changing the mindset, changing how you see things can impact how you feel and actually bring you a lot of peace in those scenarios. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. I love that. Would you feel that, if you noticed them things and you felt like maybe you did need to heal some more from that, yep. but you was in something else, what would you then do then? Could you, is it, how would you see taking someone else through that healing journey with you? When you, when could, you say you're in something else, what do you mean? Say you to like go from a really toxic relationship mm-hmm. and then you start seeing someone else and it's amazing and they're the complete opposite to the person that 
you was with before. Yeah. But then you start noticing certain traits or or ways of behavior or thinking that you might, may have picked up from that toxic relationship mm. and you can see it affecting the healthy one. Mm. And then you recognize maybe I need to heal from, there's some healing I need to do here that I didn't recognize. Mm. Would you then be able to kind of do that without it affecting your new relationship or? I think, uh, Honestly, I don't think there's a blanket statement because I think it yeah. really depends on what it is. But I think if you communicate that to your partner, assuming that they're at least operating from a healthy place, a lot of the time when they have a level of love for you, they will have a level of patience and space for you to do that. Yeah, yeah. So there might be times where, you know, where something needs to be healed means you might be acting erratic or something. Yeah. And while you might end up having an argument in the moment or something like that, they can, they're able to forgive and let that go because they see that you're at least trying, trying. to do the work. Yeah, Does that yeah, make sense? Definitely. Um, now that doesn't mean that they'll always be there forever because the work might take a year and you know, yeah. for them it might be too much. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So that can be a thing. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that's the best place to start. And yeah, there might be, there are some things, you know, like if somebody has serious commitment issues, they, I don't know how you can, fix your commitment issues in while being in a commitment. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. you kind of have to deal with that yourself. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's 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 what I would say. How have you, um, how have you found kind of dating throughout your young adult life? Like, what's that been for you? Um, not great, to okay. be honest with you. Why, why is that, why um, is that, Nia? Why not great? <laughs> um, I don't know. I just feel like I just, I think because I had kind of a chaotic upbringing um, and lifestyle when I was younger, I... I'm drawn. I, I almost feel like I attract narcissists a lot. That seems to be the theme today. Someone else oh, said really? that as well. Yeah, or like people that are not healthy for me. It's like because I've grew up maybe in an unhealthy environment, mm. I have then have become uncomfortable, com become comfortable with situations that are uncomfortable because that's my normal. Yeah. Which is really odd, but I've read a lot of books and stuff like that and they say, and you know, and they say that that's kind of can be kind of common. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, of course. But yeah, and I, I, I normally and, and I attract quite insecure men. Can you can you give me an example of a of an uncomfortable scenario that you would be comfortable in? Um. So let me think. So. So I like to go out. I'm very sociable. I'm always all over the country. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Um. And I could have a partner that's very clingy, doesn't want me out, doesn't want me around people. I could love it because I could that not love it, but I could like that they would want me all to their self. I'd like that they wouldn't want me out and in all, all these places. But then at the same time, it's a detriment to me. Because, Why? Because then it's like, okay, if you don't want that, want me to do that, then I either give up, I sacrifice that to please you or I... I don't sacrifice that and I upset you. Can, is there, can you not find a compromise? Uh, I haven't been able to. Is it as so in far. you've not been, you've not been able to compromise or is that what you're saying? You're like, for you, it's like either you have to accept me going up, uh, going out or that's it. Are yeah, you I able to compromise? I, I mean, not going out, like it's not going out partying, it's work, it's things like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. But because of the kind of people that I may meet or situations, because they're, been quite insecure because I'm, you know, I'm on the net. I'm doing lots of stuff. Mm. Um, yeah. What, what kind of what kind of work do you do? You say like I've like... done a lot of podcasts. I do social media. Oh, okay. That like kind of stuff like that. So I'm in studios a lot. Um, events, things like that. Um, yeah, and and people have found been quite insecure about that. Okay. So then it's like the compromise would be to not go. But then that's at a cost ah, of my growth. Could you not bring them with you? Is I, that not a compromise? That is a compromise, but I suppose. And I, I did actually try that for my last partner, but um, that didn't really go too well. Okay, why is that? Um, it just made. I just then realised from that I can't really be mixing. What What happened? What like, like he did? He didn't mix well. Like, did you feel? Um, no. Someone said I was. I was doing a show and somebody said something one of the guys that he got really offended by right um and you know it was borderline inappropriate um but not enough where i 
got significantly offended. It was like a topic of, a topic of conversation and he was prodding something to get maybe a certain reaction or to or something. And my partner really didn't like it and it didn't really go well. I ended up leaving. It never got aired. And yeah, I then learned from then, wow, okay, maybe we can't do this. So um, I, I, get, I get that conclusion. But before coming to that conclusion, can you say what was being said? What was being said? Um, obviously I've been away. That's now I've went to prison. Yep. Yeah. And it was just inappropriate com com comments about what the girls do to fulfill themselves sat uh, sexually, satisfy right. themselves sexually in, in there. Yep. Um, and it's, I found that bit inappropriate. Yeah. So I kind of brushed it off. He then proceeded to ask me it again in a kind of different way. Um, and the guy that I was with was kind of like cut, you know, this is too far. Um, right. Whereas I would have just held it through the conversation, but, and then it just changed the whole vibe and yeah, wasted everybody's time. Okay. So is it that the, the guy who you were talking to, like, did you feel like you set a boundary and who's kind of crossed that boundary or did you feel like it was, the conversation was still going there? So when he asked you like, oh, how do you, how do women fulfill themselves while they're inside, right? Where you're like, oh, well, yeah, there are some things, but obviously I'm here with my partner, so I'd rather not talk about that. No, I just obviously assumed that that was obvious. So I, maybe that's my my own fault there for not kind of saying. Because the, the only reason I'm asking that is because there can be a level of, there can be a level of respect that we expect of our partner yeah. about certain things, especially in front of other people and men, especially in front of like in the public eye, yeah. like in front of other people. So it could be, you know, it's inappropriate for the host to ask you that. And it, if you press that, then he probably shouldn't have done that. Yeah, yeah. But then there could be a thing of, I'm asking, could you have handled it in a way that didn't have to stop the conversation, but also your man was satisfied? Does that make sense? Mm, maybe, maybe. He just kind of was like, cut this, you know, this needs to stop. He said that he saw that it was making me uncomfortable. So then that made him more uncomfortable. Right, right, right. Yeah. So I didn't, yeah, yeah. I hear that. I hear that. I don't think that should necessarily mean that, you know, you can never bring your partner to work yeah. as, as so to speak. Yeah. Um, but maybe it's just, like I said, just, okay, maybe there are certain things you just know you feel for both of you. Like, okay, when I do these, I'm not going to talk about this. I'm yeah. not going to talk about this. From and then, I definitely learned from then. I, you know, I hadn't been doing that stuff kind of too long at that point. So mm. I was like going into things a bit like with my eyes closed. Yeah. Obviously, I've got, through experience, I now, you know, I've had boundaries. I said, I don't want to talk about yeah, this. That. Or I do a little bit of research first and things I probably should have done before. But yeah, so yeah. definitely. Yeah, of course. What's a, what's a compromise you wanted a man to make that he struggled to do? Um, uh, um, it's kind of maybe give me a bit more freedom in terms of for him to give you more freedom, yeah, I mean, independence, yeah, mm. and the yeah, and I feel like a lot of a lot of men can be kind of like, I'm the man, I'm in control, I'm you know, um, and I'm very independent, I'm very ambitious. And I've really wanted to kind I, I've really wanted compromises on that at times to kind of, you know, I'm with you, um, obviously, but kind of allow me a little bit more space to be me as so, well. So what what is it that guys would have a struggle with? Because I don't think it's is it like is it that you're going now? Do they want to actually change you? Like what is it that so. they struggle that you've come up or like consistently that they struggle about your lifestyle? I think with me, I can be, people can be attracted to me. They can be attracted by thinking I'm attractive mm -hmm. or my energy, thinking I'm fun. I've, what I've, what I've realised sadly is I think that all the things that initially draws people to me is all the things they try, then try and change. Yeah, oh, I hear you. I get that. It's, it's like, it's like if someone's drawn to you because you're used to being the, you know, the life of the party. Yeah. But then when they're with you, they don't want you to be the life of the party yeah. because then that attracts other attention that they don't want you yeah. to have. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I get that. I get that. Yes. Yeah, interesting because I think I would, in that situation, I would be like, well, you knew this is who the person was. Yeah. But then we all, to get into relationships, we all make compromises. Yeah. So I, I, I guess where's, where's the line, mm. I guess. Um, 
And I think I can be quite stubborn as well. And I think I maybe at points have got a bit offended by that, you know, like you're trying to change me and then not. I probably could have compromised more. Okay. But as I'm, get, as, I'm, yeah, as, I'm, as I'm getting older, I'm now learning that. Um, mm. So hopefully I have better, healthier relationships yeah, going yeah, forward. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, uh, when, when was the last time, what was the last time you kind of ended things with a guy? Um, a few months ago. A few months ago. No, yeah. For the same reason? Yeah. A lot of build up of all of that. Yeah. Okay. Started to lose myself to, for them uh, and mis- realised all the opportunities that I'd missed out on because of their insecurities um, and the way that I'd started to, my character had started to deteriorate a little bit. Um, mm. And I f- and I found it quite sad. Why? Uh, what have you not ever tried dating someone in this similar space? Because they would just understand it, right? They wouldn't have any issue. They'd be like, "Oh yeah, they get you're going on a podcast yeah. or you're doing this shoot with someone." Like, do you know what I mean? Have I haven't yet. Someone? Do you know what? I've 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 got a friend. He's a uh, he's in this kind of world, and he um, I've got a lot of time respect for him. I, I take a lot of advice from him, and he said to me that I need to be cautious of people mm-hmm. and that everybody's kind of got an agenda i w- would not disagree <laughs> i yeah. would not disagree so when it comes to people that kind of maybe are similar to me mm. i see them as business or work or collabs or or whatever right. whereas they have tried for more but yeah. then i always think back to they're using me they're using me for something but it's not i don't know it's just now gave me a negative view on that. If you're loving this episode and these kinds of conversations, then I want to give you something. We recently launched the Kits Angels community. This is a sisterhood for women who are tired of what the dating scene has given them and are ready to take their love lives to the next level. It's a space for you as a woman to not be alone in your journey to love, where we learn, talk, and share our experiences as part of a strong sisterhood. With some leadership and guidance from yours truly, of course. Not to mention never before seen videos from me on how I've led dozens of women to meeting great men. And so as a thank you for watching this episode, I'm giving you a month's membership completely complimentary on me. Just click the Kits Angels link below. And when you join the group, message me the code phrase Angels Podcast and I will pay for your membership. Now back to the episode. So do you think somebody in this space who, who would take an interest in you, you think the reason they're taking an interest is not because they're interested in you. Yeah. They want, what do they want? Like, I what, what would they want? <laughs> um, I don't know, to try and get my reputation, try and use my reputation for, or, okay. or uh, to try and get view. I don't know. Okay. Interesting. Have Have you had that experience before? I, I have had that experience. Not anyone that I have kind of started seeing or anything like that yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. there's been potential there um and I have not based on thinking that and it's come out not come out that they didn't like me mm-hmm. but I, but it is they've when they've said yeah but we could get great views if we do this and that I've then thought oh, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to do that I'd, I'd like to kind of s- separate the two but could you not if if somebody said Okay, if a guy approached you, he was like, hey, look, I, you know, I'm interested in you, but I also think we could work well together and we can make this a thing. Could you not just be like, look, I'm open for this to have like a personal thing, but I, I want to keep the work stuff separate. Like, yeah. I, I don't want to join that because you're enjoying the brand that you've built for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Could you, would you have not have said that and then be open to something or was it just kind of straight no? It's just straight no. Okay. Yeah, because I didn't want to put myself in a situation where I felt like I was going to have to question things. Um, mm. So it was just like, no, I haven't. Maybe I could though. Mm. Maybe be a bit I more. I think so. I think it's it's one of those, it's funny because it, in my industry, the theatre world yeah. at least, um, you know, I think it can be quite difficult for people who aren't actors to date someone who's an actor because they don't right. understand like yeah. when you're on set and the hours it requires or like if you have an audition and you have to, you have to practice this you know or like if you have a show and you're doing like seven eight shows a week or you have rehearsals and you know so I think sometimes a lot of the time creatives will date creatives because they just get it they understand um even same with like influencers and stuff well influencers actually don't 
get into serious relationships with influencers because they know what the industry is like. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think you should be open to it. I think yeah. you might surprise yourself. And I think it's good to be cautious of those things. Yeah. But I don't think- But I don't not think whereby it, you're cutting yourself, cutting it off. Yeah, because I think you could be stopping yourself from finding something that yeah. actually could be really good for you. you What's your what I mean? opinion on, on mixing business and pleasure? <laughs> <laughs> I advocate, I This say, is going to be interesting because I've always said no- and then I'm starting to think, mm, but maybe I don't know. So this is going to be interesting. Yeah. So I generally, as a blanket rule, would say no. Yeah. From, from personal experience. Uh, unless you really see that person as um, like your future. Yeah. So unless it's like, no, I think there's real, like you've already got to know them. Yeah. To the point that you're like, I think there's actually real potential for this to be my person for life. Yeah. Unless it's that, Don't I think it. I think the risk is not worth it. The risk too is too high. big. Yeah. Just because and you can have fun with it. I mean, you know, on certain acting jobs or whatever, you know, I'm not gonna lie, I've I've had situations with maybe oh, someone yeah. in the cast or something. <laughs> but more often than not, it's not ended as pleasantly as I would have liked it to. Yeah. Um, and I think just in general, I think, yeah, for, I met, like, there was one situation. I was like, cool. I'm, I'm just not doing that again. Yeah. I yeah. Just, I just, I won't do it. And it, it's happened before where maybe, you know, I worked with somebody and there was a level of interest there, but because we were working, I was like, uh -uh, yeah, nope. yeah, yeah, yeah. But you then after that. we finished the job, something kind of happened. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But generally, unless that person is going to be like your serious relationship, I, I just don't it's think it's worth it. it. Yeah. 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 What about you? Have you ever mixed business with pleasure? No. Never I in anything? No. I've always said no, no. But okay. then I'm, st oh, because of what we just discussed then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's then making me think, you know, and you said, but what about if someone that does kind of do the stuff that you do? Um, like you just said. Yeah. But um, that's why I wanted to see what you actually, if you thought that that would be. Yeah, I think, I think it's. Because I've always had that rule of you don't do it. I, I think then it's, I thought maybe wouldn't make it easier. Yeah, I, don't know. I I think it's it's just going with your eyes open. Yeah, that's yeah. what I would say. Because, well, some amazing couples have found themselves yeah. in the same industry, and actually, most most marriages back then they they did uh, they did meet in the workplace. Right, but yeah. I think just with you know social media and you know it's awareness different. sexual harassment and people yeah. not feel comfortable and stuff like that i think there's just there's there's more hidden potholes yeah so you just have to go in with your eyes open yeah do you know what i mean yeah uh what's one thing you could ask all men today if you could oh gosh um one thing i could ask all men um what is their biggest fear when it comes to attachment as in with them attaching to a woman or with a woman attaching to them? Maybe both. Okay. Biggest fear, okay. Biggest fear with them attaching to a woman? Hmm. Big one, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would say, I mean, everyone's afraid of the person that they want leaving them. Yeah. I think men's biggest fear is a woman destroying him. Right. Uh, in a sense of, because it takes a lot for men to be vulnerable. Yeah. And not just vulnerable with his emotions, but vulnerable with his life, what yeah. he's built, right? Yeah. And I think men's biggest fear is a woman, for whatever reason, using his vulnerabilities in his emotional, in his finances or whatever, against, against him to him. destroy him. Yeah. And I think the reason that's men's biggest fear is because at least definitely my generation, we've seen that happen, especially in like divorce a lot yeah. of the time, like men just get taken to the cleaners or, yeah. you know, I've, I've heard it, you know, I've heard it where, uh, this was actually a friend of mine who he told a girl that, you know, growing up, like his dad wasn't in his life. And, you know, so he kind of struggled not having a masculine, you know, role model in his life and stuff. And it's quite early on. She was like, oh, you know, thank you for telling me. And then an argument about my down the line and she kind of was just like, yeah, well, you're probably like this because your dad wasn't in your life or something. And right. it was like, and from that, he was like, right, I'm never opening up yeah. to a woman again about yeah. that ever. And that's sad. Yeah. Yeah, um, but know, it happens. Yeah. And I did talk to him. I said, look, that you weren't wrong for opening up. Like yeah. that was on her. Obviously, 
maybe you know build more trust to know that a woman wouldn't use it against you in that yeah. sense but i think that's a man's biggest fear like a woman using things in his life that are vulnerable to him to destroy him yeah. i think that's his biggest fear and his biggest fear to a woman attaching to him uh <laughs> <laughs> I'd say trapping him with a baby. Yeah, straight. <laughs> trapping him with a baby, being yeah. like, you know, because women can use sex to get guys. Yeah. That maybe yeah. that guy wouldn't ordinarily choose them, but yeah. men are hardwired to seek sexual opportunity. So women can yeah. use that. Um, and so if a woman is with a man that maybe she knows she he doesn't feel the same way, but yeah. she wants this man in her life, you know, if she gets pregnant by him. It's all over, yeah. That's it. How long? How long would you wait? Would you rec like? Would you think someone should wait before being like intimate with someone um, mm. to gain the utmost respect? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, so definitely not the first date. Yeah, <laughs> definitely not the first date. Yeah, red flag. Uh, <laughs> people try and say no, it doesn't matter. It matters <laughs> to men. It matters. Um, so I would say. So sometimes people are like, oh, the third day or the third month or whatever. And, you know, if people said like the third date, well, it depends how much time you spent with them. Yeah. So like if each date was two hours long, by the third date, you've spent six, seven hours. But with the first date, you spend a whole day together. You spent the same amount of time, but that's one day and that's yeah. three days, right? Yeah. So generally what I say is ask yourself, would I introduce him to my friends? Because... Okay, let's say like your girlfriends are having a party, right? Yeah. If you bring a plus one, you wouldn't bring anyone that you don't trust because they are an ambassador for your reputation. 100%. Right? Because if you bring a plus one and, you know, that person's really drunk, being obnoxious, they're like trashing the place. Everyone's like, yo, who brought that? Yeah, it's, it's like, oh, that's cool. Nia's friend. Yeah. Everyone then judges you <laughs> yeah. because of that person's behavior. Yeah. That's your plus one, right? So generally speaking, when we're bringing someone as a plus one, especially to our friends, mm. right, in our circles, we generally wouldn't bring someone that we don't know wouldn't be a good ambassador for yeah. our reputation. So if your girlfriends are having a party or something and like a close party and you could bring a plus one and you don't know him well enough where he would represent you well. Don't bring him. Then it's too soon to sleep with him. Yeah, right. Okay. So when you know him well enough that you're like, I'm comfortable being with this guy in front of my yeah. friends then that usually signs, that's usually a sign that you know him well enough, you built a level of rapport with him enough yeah. that you can be intimate with him where that's building the intimacy as yeah. opposed to just, you know, just getting a quick fix. Right, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, I love that. Definitely, yeah. that's great. Have you, ever, have you ever felt that you've maybe slept with a guy too soon or not soon enough? You ever, you ever had that? Uh, Probably a boat, but a boat really. Yeah. yeah um, Because I think, you know, you could, you could do it too soon and you could, you know, to essentially ruin it sure. through that yeah, yeah, or yeah. and then it's like or you could wait too long and then it kind of fizzes out fizzles out mm. so i suppose through growth through grow, like experience you're kind of trying to find that balance what, what's your experience been in terms of what's been in your opinion like really too soon and what's an example where you kind of waited too long and it did just fizzle out uh i'm not really sure no no what's the, what's the longest you've waited a year a year a year. Like, as in, were you dating a guy for a year? Yeah, but like, we never used to see each other all the time, stuff like that. But yeah, yeah. As in, you were actually like, from the first date <laughs> to you guys sleeping together, being intimate, was a year? It was a year. Twice, actually, that's been a year. Wow. It's like a test. I, that, that's a hefty test. To see how much they're really into me, like what, how much they'll. Why, why so long? Were you just not that into them? Uh, I don't know. I just think maybe a fear of abandonment, abandonment sure. issues. Um, yeah. Feeling mm. used maybe, stuff like that. I mean, after How, a year, I don't think you'd be used after yeah, a year. No, definitely not. How would you recommend someone with like abandonment issues? Mm. How would they, by not sabotaging something out of that fear? Hmm. I would, I would ask, how do you self-sabotage though? How do you self-sabotage? Mm, uh, maybe by like um, overthinking things, pushing things, overthinking things that would just maybe flow because of the trauma of abandonment. Mm. Um, 
thinking that they're going to leave you or mm. thinking that, yeah, stuff like that. And then kind of like pressuring things that don't really need to put pressure on. Mm. And then, oh, I'm at least something that could be so great. I've just tore it all apart before it started. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. Anytime you're feeling to put pressure on something. Yeah. So like to put pressure on your partner for something. If you can have awareness of whether you're being, whether it's reasonable or not, because some things might be reasonable, some might not be. Ask yourself, why is this important to me in this moment? Yeah. Like, why? Like, why Why is you going out with your friends? Why do I have deep issues with that? Why Why can't I accept that? And it's like, okay, why? Well, what am I think is going to happen? Well, you're going to go out with your friends and then you're going to meet someone else and then you're going to leave me. Okay. Did this person go out with their friends while we were dating? Yeah. Did they leave you when they were dating? No. Mm. Are you further along now? Yeah. Are you more bonded now? 100%. So they're more likely to leave you when the bond is less, which was in the beginning, and they didn't. So why would they right. leave you now? Yeah. Because the bond is much stronger. Very interesting. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. So if you ask yourself why, and then after asking yourself for why, if you can, I mean, I get it. Like I, when I, like I'm a guy, so I look at, I tend to look at things quite logically. Yeah. I try to. Um, with a level of emotional empathy when I can, but I, you know, we all grow. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, like, you know, asking yourself why in that moment. And sometimes it's justified. It might be like, okay, well, the reason I have a problem with him going out because the last time he went out, he kissed another girl. So yeah. like, okay, well, that's, that's a justified kind of fear yeah. or pressure of him going out and that trust hasn't been rebuilt yet. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so yeah, asking yourself why. And if, if you ask yourself why and you can't come to like a reasonable conclusion, then that's when healing has to be done. And yeah. like I said, that's either therapy or reading books or having a conversation with someone that you need to. So yeah, that's that's what I would say. But you said you're you're used to attracting narcissistic men. Yeah. <laughs> have you and you don't have to answer this? Has you going away being like part of your history, what have men thought about that? Has that had any effect? Has that made you made them want you war? Has that made them go, oh, that's really adventurous? Has that made him go, oh, like, are you going to leave me? Like, how how has that played for you? And you don't have to answer that, but um, I, I think in a mix of ways, um, I think that in some ways, because I've been away for so long, some people can get insecure with me because then they can feel like she's lost out on a lot of time why is she going to now spend the time that she's got all with me? Sure. So there's that fear of I'm going to see something else, and see someone else for, because I, for, for more, for the, for more experiences, Sure. you know, yeah. um, if you don't mind me asking, how long were you in prison for? Uh, six and a half years. Wow. That's a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also other people. And I think at times there's been points where because of that, I feel like, I'm at points it's like I'm more um what's the word I'm more like I'm easier to settle for things because I've been in bad situations so it's like do you know what I mean you're, like you'll you'll uh, you you'll accept less yeah right because I've had less yeah um sadly right. I've, I find I've found that I think as well right um so then it's like, oh, because I've been in situations where I've, I've been shit and obviously and I've been in prison, I've been on my own. Mm. Then it's like, okay, so then when I am with someone, people have, it's like, I don't get what I deserve. Mm. I have, I haven't, not that I don't, or mm. just like from, you know, just different experiences. But there's been points where I haven't and then it's been like, oh, well, you know, you just accept it because I haven't got loads to compare it to. Sure. You know, and it's still an upgrade from places that I've been. Yeah. But then at the same, and then it's like maybe my values seem seen as less mm. than other women. So yeah, you know. Do Do you feel that you've missed out? Um. From experiences. I do feel like I've missed out in some ways, but then in others I don't. I feel like I've gained. Because yeah, I may have lost out on time, but mm. I've gained a lot in terms of getting to know myself, understanding healing, understanding things that situations I've been in, healing through stuff that I've been through, whereby my experiences and my time that I do have now mm. would be loads better and sure. is loads better. Yeah. So I don't look back and see it as so much of a loss yeah. because what could that have been? 
if, yes. it, if I wasn't who I am now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah so I'd rather that. value value over, you know. Quality over quantity. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. get that. I get that. I get that. One last thing I want to ask you is what would you ask? Do you want to get married? I'd like to. You'd like to? Yeah. What would you ask your future husband if you could? What would you ask him? Um, what would I ask him? Can can you cook? <laughs> <laughs> At least she's honest, boy. No, I'm At least joking. She's I mean, well, that would be helpful. But yeah. I mean, you know, just just be patient with me. To ask him to be patient. With yeah, you. just yeah. you know, like I'm, um, I can be amazing, like 100 mile an hour one day, and then I could be like really deflate, deflated the next. Just just be patient with me. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, I get that. I get that. Well, Nia, we appreciate you for, appreciate you for coming on. So thank you. thank you so much for coming on. No problem. Um, if people want to find you, where can they find you? They can find me on Instagram, Nia Inspired, YouTube, Nia Inspired, TikTok, Nia Inspired. So perfect, yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you for sharing your energy with us today. We thank you for having you. me. Guys, thank you for tuning in. Go get, show Nia some love. Give it a like, give it a follow, all that good stuff. Yeah, and I will it. see you in the next episode. See ya. Thank you.